We wish you a happy new year and pray that 2023 will be a better year for you, that you'll feel all of God's blessings and know his peace this year, that you and your family will have a wonderful year and draw closer to the Lord. Our scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter, verses 13 through 23. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around of Bethlehem who were two years old or under according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But he, when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And he, be, he being warned in a dream went away to the district of Galilee. Then he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. May God have his blessing to his holy word. In the scripture today, the wise men who had visited the child bearing expensive gifts had just left to return. Joseph, as he slept that evening, had an angel appear to him in a dream. Previously, he'd had a dream. An angel told him in that dream not to be afraid or to be ashamed to take Mary as his wife. Now in a dream, an angel is telling him to take his wife and his son to Egypt, that Herod was trying to kill him. Would not have been an unusual directive for Joseph at that time. The historian Philo says that there were about one million Jews living in Egypt at that time. It was only about 75 miles from where they were, and it was away from the jurisdiction of Herod. So Joseph went. The angel had warned that Herod had aggravated the wise men when they went home a different way and didn't bring them to where the child was. And Herod would do all that he could to destroy this child. Yet, we see that a sovereign God would protect his son. Joseph didn't question the dream. He obeyed and he went to Egypt. He couldn't imagine when he and Mary became betrothed of all the things that would happen. The dreams that he would have where angels spoke to him told him not to be afraid to marry Mary, told him to take and protect his wife and his son. Angels being reported by the shepherds, wise men coming. Joseph could not have imagined this, but it came. He believed the Lord. We are told how long that he stayed in the land of Egypt. Some believe it was months, others believe it was years. But it's an example to us that we won't always understand what God leads us to do. But we should obey because God's will is always best for us. It would have been easy for Joseph to question this dream. It would have been easy for him to say to God, you want me to leave my family? Go to a different area? I have a business 
You want me to close it and go where I know no one? But because of his faith, because he thought back and he remembered God working in his life, sending shepherds to tell of the angels and to assure him of who they came to see, the Savior. The wise men who had come many miles to worship this child. Will we hear God's call to us? Will we hear his directions for our life? where we hear him tell us what he needs us to do and what would be a blessing to us. Joseph may not have been familiar with the Old Testament prophecy, out of Egypt I call my son, but most who were familiar with the prophecy believed that it would be in splendor that the Messiah would come out of Egypt. Little did they recognize that he was sent there to spare his life a life that Herod wanted to take. God works in his ways. We see that God did not spare his own son from the danger of evil men. As a child, a wicked ruler desired to kill him. 33 years later, jealous men had him put on a cross and crucified. Our Lord doesn't spare his church from persecution either. Today the Christian church is persecuted for her faith in God and our belief in his word. We are called hard-hearted because we believe his word and we try to follow it. We are called intolerant because we hold fast to what we believe is right. We are called outdated for continuing together together and worship him and honor him that he is due and to serve him. The one faith where God sent his son to teach us how to love, how to treat one another. Modeled that by his willingness to die on a cross in our place. And yet, Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world. But let me ask you this. Why do you think that Satan would have mankind persecute Christianity? and leave the other religions alone. Think about that. We believe the truth. We may be persecuted, but we are not defeated. Our God is still on the throne and he calls his own to come to him. Hear this quote by Charles Spurgeon. Out of the dangers of the church must emerge far better for her affliction. Out of Egypt, I call my son, is a text worthy to be made a proverb, for it is through, true throughout the history of the chosen seed. They are called out from the surrounding races of rebels, and when the call comes, none can hold them back. It is easier to restrain the sun from rising than to hold the redeemed of the Lord in perpetual servitude. Who shall block their road? God is still calling them out, and until the last of the elect are gathered in, it will stand true. Out of Egypt, out of anywhere else that is like Egypt, out of the worst and vilest places, out of places where they are held fast in their bondage, out of those places I called my son. I don't know where you are in this new year, I don't know what you're dealing with in life, but I assure you this, your God knows. He has not deserted you. He has not left you to yourself. He can still call you by your name. He knows the trials that you're facing. And I promise you that your God towers over any challenge, whatever it might be. He will call you from that challenge and when he does, nothing or no one will stop you. He will hold his promises still. So I entice you, hold to those promises, believe in them. Look at his greatness and his majesty and do it with all. For he will be your deliverer. He will take you where he needs you to go. You are under his hands of protection. 
Herod was tricked by the wise men. They saw the child that they came to see and they went home a different way. But Herod then ordered all the male children in Bethlehem to be put to death. While we were appalled at such an action, it was not out of the ordinary for Herod, for he was certainly a wicked man. Caesar Augustus once said, I would rather be Herod's pig than to be one of his sons. Herod killed three of his sons, one of his wives, his mother-in-law. He had many of his officials arrested and imprisoned under trumped up charges and ordered that when he died, that they be put to death. You see, Herod realized that when he died, no one would mourn. So he wanted to make sure there was weeping in the land, even if it wasn't for him. The world has often seen the ugliness of what mankind is capable of. We shake our heads at the many things we see and hear, but we need to realize that until the Lord returns and sets up his kingdom, that peace will not exist in this world. There's no discourse and no strife in heaven. What our Lord says is what happens there. And when he sets up his kingdom in this world, it will be like that, but not until. The scripture then speaks of Rachel reaping for her children. Jeremiah had prophesied that this would happen centuries before. Rachel was the beloved wife of Jacob and when she died, Jacob buried her in Bethlehem. She represents the mothers of Israel re weeping over the children that were killed. We live in a world today where life is no longer considered to be precious. Shootings are rampant across our country. Our young people join gangs and take lives and think nothing of it. We have across our country a battle today over abortion on demand. What I'm about to say will offend some, but we need to understand we do not have the right to take life. That belongs to God and to God alone. It's not our right. Only God can call home the life that he gives. In the scripture in Egypt, Joseph had another dream from an angel. He was told that Herod had died and to go back to Israel. And he did, but when he got close, he earned, learned that Herod's son Archelaus was now in charge. And he was every bit as evil as his father was. So Joseph took his family to Nazareth in Galilee. Our Lord was born in a tiny town called Bethlehem. He went to Egypt instead of Jerusalem where there were the temple and fine rabbinical schools and many things of God. And then the Lord sent the future savior of the world to go to Nazareth, a town of Gentiles, publicans, sinners, a town that was looked down upon. Why? Because God's plan was that his son be able to relate to us to accept us as his own and to love us. God was calling Joseph to look past what the crowd thought and what most believed and to follow him and to do what he said. God calls us to be faithful to him as well. Are we willing to hear his voice, to hear his call? It was a difficult day that our Lord was born into it's a difficult day today if you want to be a Christian. I realize that most of us long for a time that existed just maybe three years ago, the time before the, impact, the pandemic impacted us like it did. Just three years ago, there were nearly twice as many people here on Sunday morning as there is today. Unfortunately, that's the case in a lot of churches. We had more people being involved in the ministry and the mission of the church. As the pastor of this church, I spent more time thinking and planning about what we would do next instead of how I can put enough people together to do what we need to do. 
But the truth is this, God has not quit calling us to be the church, the people of God. His desire for us, as well as all other churches, has not changed. I realize that it's a different day than it was three years ago. And we can't stick our head in the ground and pretend that nothing has happened and nothing has changed. And it's not likely that things are going to roll back the way they were before. So what do we do as people of faith? I believe this. I believe that we hold fast to the Word of God. It's our hope, our strength, and our guidance. I believe that we trust the things that God has called us to and do the things that God has called us to do. Be the people that God has called us to be. That we find our peace and satisfaction in serving Him. Like the wise men, we be found looking for God, what God will show us and what he will reveal to us. It will come much easier if we're looking for it. That he will direct us to go where he sends us and where he needs us. And he will supply what we need when we get there. Like Joseph, that we hear his call clearly and that we have the courage to obey. Next, I pray that we commit our lives to work for him and that this community will see us serving God. Find out what God wants you to do and do it. Be a part of his work in this world. It doesn't have to be life changing. It doesn't have to be world changing, but make a difference. Make a difference in your church. Make a difference to improve someone's life. Help in the work that we undertake, supporting Sunnyside, Crisis Control, Ibrahim School, or some ministry where you can make a difference. Spend more time in prayer. Thank God for whom he is and what he does. Pray for this church, your pastor, your boards, the teachers in our Sunday school and the ministry that we take part in here. In your own life, learn to forgive. It's a hard world, and before this year is over, your feelings are going to be hurt by somebody, somewhere. Learn to forgive. You have too many things that are good in your life that you can do to hold fast to a grudge that may keep you from doing the will of the Lord. Make sure your time is well spent. Forgive. It's a hard world. And then finally, like Joseph, know that God loves you. Trust that and believe that. You may not understand what he's calling you to do, but you will build his faith by following him. Tell him the trials that you face in your life. Take them to him because he cares. Expect him to work in your life and be open to it when he does. And when he works in your life and he overcomes a trial or a tribulation, use that story as a witness to glorify him. Tell the world what he did in your life. May this year find you being a blessing and be blessed because you are one. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we thank you as we enter into this year, we thank you for who you are, how much you love us, what you have given to sustain us. Lord, may we be found in this year as your people, committed to you in the things that we do, committed to you, Lord, in our prayer life, committed to you, Lord, in the actions we take and the way we live. For Lord, and there we will find our hope and our peace. We will understand what joy is because we trust you. Lead us, O Lord, and let us be faithful. This we pray. Amen.